reasons. If you could say a few things about taking a leap, you know, that's a term that you've used in the past. Mm. Yeah. What does it mean to take a leap and how is that related to your work? A client of mine uh, who is an artist uh, drew a cartoon for me. Uh, it shows, you know, use this, get these out of here. You know, it, it shows a person standing at the edge of a cliff and there's a chasm, you know, between the two cliffs and a person, the caption, you know, the balloon, I think they call it, says, oh my God, I'll never make it. And the reality is that it's like a six inch chasm. So the leap is to risk doing that which uh, is very unfamiliar and scary, which uh, is because of the fixed gestalt. So a person is a, you know, afraid to raise their voice uh, when they're angry because you know, they learned that was the conditioning as a child and so forth. And something terrible is going to happen. If, if, I, if, if you accidentally spill hot water on me uh, and I yelled at you for it, our relationship would dissolve, you know, that kind of catastrophic expectation. So the leap is to, after the ground, you know, building the ground of a, of a relationship first between therapist and client, and then the awareness of the fixed gestalt, which I don't use the term fixed gestalt with clients, but, uh, but the, the awareness, I use automatic behavior more likely, um, or, or stuff that you become an expert in. You become an expert in hiding your anger, you know, whatever it is. Anyway, once that awareness has evolved, to then take the leap, the perceived leap at least, it's either a leap or a perceived leap, uh, could be a leap, you know, but to, to risk doing something different that's very awkward and familiar. A leap is a very heavy duty experiment, you know, it, it's one on the continuum of something either new but not scary to uh, new and terrifying, you know, terrifying is the leap, but anything in between, you know, or all of that qualifies as an experiment, which is to simply do something new uh, other than the automatic or fixed behavior which uh, carries us through but not necessarily in a lively, satisfying way. Is, is there a method you use to structure these experiments? Do you just come out with them out of the blue? or it how do you? It varies. Like I remember in the workshop uh, this past weekend, there was one time where I didn't do any preparation with a particular person because I was confident he was ready to go. You know, I didn't need to say, you know, the usual or what I often say is, uh, so I have an experiment to suggest to you and it's about doing something different, you know, blah, blah, blah. But in this case, I just said, I want you to come out in the middle, you know, mm -hmm. and he did because he was ready. So, depending upon the individual's, my perception of the individual's readiness, I do a lot of preparation or anything between that and no preparation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you have any, what was your insight in terms of, I think I know you're speaking of uh, the gentleman with the blindfold in the middle of the group. Did mm -hmm. you have any thoughts about that? Was that a creative moment or did you structure, the, why the center of the group, why the blindfold? Why? It was a creative moment, yeah. I mean, I didn't plan it in any way. It just, uh, I just had this, very often when I'm working and something flashes to me, uh, I act on it, you know. I mean, I don't mean I act that second, right. but I, I, I get the flash and I didn't know where it came from, so to speak. Is it a felt sense uh, that it's, helps it's, create that? It's, it's more of a idea. Mm -hmm. And maybe an image. And yeah, there's always a something feeling goes with it, you know, excitement or or fear, you know, or 
risk, a feeling of risk, or whatever. So very often, uh, and that's one of the things I love about marathons, even much more than the, the uh, weekly groups. Now I get much more creative in a marathon. Like in this past weekend in the marathon, I, I used uh, some uh, singing and such. I don't, I don't ordinarily mm -hmm. won't do that. Mm -hmm. In a two-hour group, I don't get mm -hmm. stimulated Sorry. that way, you know, very rarely. But in a marathon, almost invariably, you know, juices flow much, much stronger. Yeah. Mm -hmm.